Okay, we're graphing with tables. And I started with okay again. Uh, okay, we have this equation here. This is a linear equation. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using tables to solve these linear equations. Now, many of you guys might remember other methods to do it. If you know how to do it with another way, that's fine. Go right ahead. But we're going to focus on the most basic way to solve something like this. In these questions, they've actually given us a bunch of values. Okay? In the one I have here, I haven't given you any x values. So I'm just going to choose a few. I'm going to start at negative 1. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're going to choose just random numbers around our origin, around our x-intercept. Okay? These values, we're going to be replacing x in each of the equations with each of these values. So we're going to take negative 2 and plug it in for the x in this equation. So y is equal to negative 1 half. We're going to replace x with the value of negative 2 and add 8. We're then going to solve for y, and that will be our y coordinate. So it will give us one of our coordinates. So hopefully you guys remember your fraction rules. This becomes this whole number becomes a fraction. We multiply it across the top. Two negatives times each other give us what? Positive. positive. So we're going to get positive 2 over 2 plus 8. That's right. 2 over 2 is the equivalent of 1 plus 8 is equal to 9. So our first coordinate is at negative 2 and 9. But that's only one coordinate. We need to go through the process and get a few of these in order to graph the line. So, negative 1 will be the next one. I'll do that in blue. Okay. I'm going to start here. y is equal to negative 1 half times negative 1 plus 8. Negative 1 half times negative 1 will be positive 1 half okay, plus 8. And what I'm going to do is, I already know 1 half is what as a decimal? 0.5. And what's 0.5 plus 8? 8.5. So make it nice and easy for me. Our next coordinate is negative 1 and 8.5. We'll do 0 in red. y is equal to negative 1 half times 0 plus 8. What is 0 times negative 1 half going to be? 0, that's right. So we're going to be left with y is equal to just 8. Are you guys noticing a pattern as I go through this? So what's the next value going to be? And then? Great. Okay. So we have these. And now the question is actually asking us to graph these things. So we're going to get another page up here, and we'll put up a graph. Okay. okay. We have an enlarged graph here. We're going to take each of those values, negative 2 and 9. Negative 2 is my value on the x-axis, and 9 is my y, so I go up to here. Here's our first point. The next point is at negative 1 and 8.5. Negative 1 and 8.5 will be here. 0 and 8. 1 and 7.5. And 2 and 7. So from there, all we really have to do is connect our dots. And that's it. There's our linear equation. We're working with quadratics. And this is our equation we're going to be working with. We're going to do the exact same style. We're going to create a table. And then we're going to plug values in to find out what our coordinates are in terms of graphing. Now, on the grids I've given you guys, they range on the x-axis from negative 10 to positive 10. So really, all of those numbers in between, anywhere from negative 10 all the way down to positive 10 is fair game to put in here. Okay, We can put any of those values in, plug them in, and see if they end up on the graph. Now, we might plug a value in like negative 10 and get maybe something like, just for argument's sake, say we get 89. Well, that won't end up on our graph. That's far too high. So we'll have to continue down until we get values that actually show up on this graph. And when we graph this, because it's quadratic, it's going to look something like one of those two. Okay, it's going to make a shape of a parabola. Now. Personally, I really just like starting at negative 2 and going to positive 2, but it's completely up to you where you want to start. And I might find that these values that I choose at random may not be any good at all. And I might have to go lower or much higher. So I'm going to start again with negative 2. And I'll see if that will give me a value that's close to it. 
Now this time when I plug in, because there are two x values, we have to plug negative 2 in for both of them. So y is equal to negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2 minus 3. Now I'm going to go through this much quicker because I assume you guys are relatively strong with your integers after doing that stuff. Negative 2 squared is going to be, no, positive 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive value. Positive 2 times negative 2 will give us negative 4. Minus 3 worked out great. Our value is 3. So that's great. We know negative 2 and 3 will fall on the graph. So from there I'm going to try the next value at negative 1. y is equal to, I'm not going to write them in red anymore, negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3. Negative 1 squared will give us positive 1. 2 times negative 1 will give us negative 2 minus 3. What's that going to give us? Not quite. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So it's changing quickly. Let's try zero. Now, I want you guys to see if you can do this in your head. If I plug zero in, what's my answer going to be? What is it? Isn't it? Yeah, negative three. Oh, yes, very good. Oh, wow. That's okay. That works out great. <laughs> That's negative three. Now, this answer here, quickly, like I said, in your head, if we plug zero in for this value, what's our answer going to be? Negative. Yes, these will cancel out. Zero times anything is just going to be zero. So we're going to be left with our answer of negative three. So if you notice, the y values have done some type of turn, which is exactly what we expect them to do with the quadratic. Okay? Um, from there, I'll do one more. We'll do positive one. And then we can probably estimate the entire rest of this graph. So one squared plus two times one minus three. We're going to get 1 plus 2 minus 3. And that's going to give us what value? Zero. zero. Very good. Okay. So we have another coordinate, 1 and 0. So we're going to do the exact same thing we had done before. We're going to put up another page with a graph. Here it is. We're going to take those coordinates. And we're going to plug these values in and try to create what should look like a parabola. So negative 2 and negative 3. X is negative 2, Y is negative 3. Negative 1 and negative 4. 0 and negative 3. And then 1 and 0. So, so far I have this in terms of the shape. I can probably estimate that at negative 3 will also be at 0 because quadratics are symmetrical. Okay? And this is roughly the shape we're creating there. Okay, and that's what it's going to look like. Exact same process as linear stuff, just remember that the shape won't be the same. When checking a linear one, we should have a straight line, and when checking this, we should get a parabola shape.